Hello. In this video, we show you how to set up a Qt Android and desktop development environment on Xubuntu. We will download the Android SDK, NDK and Qt, install all the software, and then finish up by running an example application on a virtual Android device. Now, although this video is 15 minutes long, expect the actual installation time to take 35 minutes. This is a fresh install of Xubuntu 14.04 LTS, and it is a 64-bit version. Let's start by downloading all the required files, and we navigate to qt.io. Click on Developers. Click Installation. Click Android. Click on Android SDK. And then click on Other Download Options. And here we have the Android SDK. Let's download it. And next we download the NDK. And this is the 64-bit version that we want to download. And lastly, we download the Qt Online Installer. For now, we will just select the Community Edition. Now that we have downloaded all the required files, we can begin with setting up the development environments. First up is Linux. Type in a terminal sudo apt-get install build-essential libgl1-mesa-dev. Now let's turn to the setup of the Android development environment. For Android, we need to install Ant and Java. You can use either Java SE Development Kit or OpenJDK. In this installation, we're going to choose OpenJDK. In the terminal, type sudo apt-get install openjdk-7-7. JDK. The installation of Apache Ant is quite straightforward. In a terminal type sudo apt-get install ant. If you want to check the version of Ant installed, just type in the terminal ant hyphen version. By now, all the files have been downloaded. Let's move the downloaded Android files to a new directory. In the home directory, create a folder called develop. And then in the develop folder, create a folder called libs. And now, move the downloaded Android files to this libs directory. This is the Android SDK, and now we're going to extract it. This is the point where we can start working on the SDK installation, and there are specific instructions on how to install the SDK on Ubuntu. In the Android SDK installation page, click on Show Instructions for All Platforms, then click on Troubleshooting Ubuntu. These install actions are required so that you can run the Android emulator. So in the terminal, type 
sudo dpkg hyphen hyphen add hyphen architecture i386 followed by sudo apt hyphen get update and the last line sudo apt hyphen get install libncursors5 colon i386 libstdc++6 colon i386 zlib1 g colon i386 In the next step, we update the SDK using the SDK Manager. To do this from the terminal, change the current directory to the Android SDK folder and type dot forward slash tools forward slash Android update SDK. And this is the Android SDK Manager. It shows us that the SDK tools are installed and that the platform tools and build tools are ready to be installed. Now minimize the tools component, and then under Android 5, just select the ARM and Intel x86 images. Let's also assume we want to support Android 4.4.2. And again, we install the ARM and Intel images. Accept the license, and then click Install. Reviewing the update, we have the Android SDK tools, platform and build tools. Under Android 5, the Android SDK platform is installed, the ARM image and the Intel x86 image. Under Android 4.4.2, we have the SDK, ARM and Intel image. And that completes the SDK update. And now, finally, we can create a virtual Android device. Click on the tools and then click Manage AVDs. Click Create and then enter the following. For the AVD name, type MyArm7 and then select a 7 inch device. The target will be Android 5. And for the CPU, ARM. The keyboard will leave as ticked as present and will select No Skin. And to speed things up, we'll select Use Host GPU. Click OK. And this shows the configuration for the device that we just made. So let's see if our newly created ARM device is working properly. To do that, select the device and click Start. Now if you want, you can rescale the display, but we'll skip that and click Launch. If you don't want to send any usage statistics, unclick the box and click Proceed. During boot up, Android is displayed, and depending on the computer speed, it can potentially take up to 6 minutes for the emulation to boot for the first time. If the Android display does not finish, then this could indicate a problem with the configuration. And this device has booted successfully. Let's unlock it by swiping up. Click OK to clear the help screen. This completes the work on the device creation and the SDK itself. So let's close the emulator and start work on the Android NDK. In the terminal, change the current directory to the libs folder that we created earlier. Make the NDK bin file an executable. As before, we use chmod a plus x followed by the ndk file name. Run the bin file to extract the ndk. Returning to the Qt Android installation page, let's install the outstanding library dependencies. Looking at the library dependencies, there's two libraries we have not yet explicitly installed although the GCC1 library should already be installed. Just to check, we will try to install it. In the terminal, type sudo apt-get install libgcc1 colon i386. And this confirms that the library is installed. 
and the last library is the SDL library. Type in the terminal sudo apt-get install libsdl1.2 debian colon i386. We are now ready to install Qt. In the terminal, change the current directory to the downloads folder. Then make the Qt run file an executable using chmod a plus x as before. Then execute the online installer. Now that we have the Qt installer running, click Next. Accept the default installation directory by clicking Next. This shows the Qt components that will be installed. Expand the latest Qt version. The selected subcomponents are GCC and ARM7. Let's also include Android x86. Now, it may well be that the latest version is a release candidate, and if that is the case, you may wish to pick the earlier but stable release version. Click Next to install the components. Accept the license agreement and click Next. Click Install. Deselect the README and click Finish to start the Qt Creator. And now, the Qt Creator setup for Android. To do this, click on Tools and then Options and then select Android in the scroll panel on the left. In the Android Configuration tab, set the Android SDK location by clicking the Browse button. Navigate to Develop, Libs, and then Android SDK Linux. Click Open. Likewise, for the NDK, click the Browse button and then select the NDK folder. Click Open. We see here that Ant, the build tool, the My Arm 7 virtual device, and of course the Java JDK have all been recognised. Click OK to finish the configuration. The Qt development environment is now ready for use. Let's just test it by running an example on our Arm 7 device. Click the examples and select the Qt Quick Demo Clocks. In the configuration project, as we only have an ARM device available, deselect the Intel build. Click Configure Project. Change the build target from Desktop to Android. And we want the release build. Click the Run button. Select from the list of compatible devices, of which there are only one, the ARM7. Now it may take three minutes for the ARM7 device to boot up. Unlock the device by swiping up. Qt Creator then deploys the clocks demo to the device. And that completes our installation of Qt for Android on Xubuntu. Thank you for watching and happy Androiding with Qt.